All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Yovana Smolenich, and I'm a master's student with Dr. Ali J in the Thermal Ergonomics Laboratory at the University of Ottawa in Canada. Um, and today, my presentation is entitled Running Economy, Not Aerobic Fitness Independently Influences Thermoregulatory Responses During Running. So why is this important? Well, for methodological purposes. So some studies have to use an independent group's design to evaluate um, their findings. So for example, studies comparing healthy individuals to those with MS or spinal cord injuries, um, and they can't use a um, repeated group's measure. So um, for them, it's important to use an independent group's design and to make sure that the differences in thermoregulatory responses that they are seeing are due to um, the condition that they are evaluating and not other confounding variables. So they must administer a um, exercise intensity that will allow for a fair comparison between these groups. So which exercise intensity should they administer? Well, well, well Ollie gave us some insight into that earlier. So um, currently in the literature, there's a widely held belief that relative exercise intensity determines thermoregulatory responses. Um, and this started with Saltine and Hermanson in 1966. Um, however, most of these studies were done on a cycle ergometer, with the exception of Gantadol in 2004. So what Gantadol did is they had two groups, a moderately fit group and an, an extremely fit group, and they administered a common running speed um, as well as a relative exercise intensity. And they assumed that the common running speed was a fixed VO2. Um, and during that trial, they saw that the moderately fit group had significantly greater changes in rectal temperature compared to the high fit group. Whereas during the relative intensity trial, they saw that the two groups had um, s quite similar um, and rectal temperatures. So they just assumed that their findings supported all the previous studies and that relative exercise intensity did determine thermoregulatory responses. However, they did not account for um, mass, um, which we saw earlier was an important component. So they had about a five kilo difference in mass. They did not take into account running economy and also heat production. So these are all factors we need to account for um, when evaluating thermoregulatory responses. So a study in 2011 by Jay and all showed that, and you saw these findings earlier, that a fixed VO2 um, resulted in identical changes in core temperature between a fit and unfit group, whereas a relative exercise intensity resulted in significantly greater changes in the high fitness group compared to the low fitness group. Now, this study was done on a um, cycle ergometer. So the question with running is, will fix a fixed running speed elicit a fixed VO2? Um, or, geez, or or will that result, or will the differences in running economy be significant enough to s result in physio physiologically significant differences in thermoregulatory responses? So the purpose of this study is to evaluate the independent fit influence of both aerobic fitness and running economy on thermoregulatory responses. So to evaluate the independent influence of fitness, we had two groups of seven participants matched for age, body mass, body surface area, body fat percentage, and running economy, with the only thing differing uh, being VO2 peak. So the low group was the low aerobic fitness group, and the high group was the high aerobic fitness group. Now to compare these two groups, we uh, had them do a fixed heat production trial of 650 watts, and we compared that to the traditional approach of a relative exercise intensity of 60% VO2 peak. Now to evaluate the independent influence of running economy, we had two groups again of seven participants, 
Um, again, we match them for age, body mass, body surface area, body fat percentage, and VO2 peak, with the only thing differing being running economy. And now to evaluate the independent influence of running economy, we had them do a true fixed VO2, so a true fixed heat production of 650 watts, and a fixed running speed of um, 10.5 kilometers an hour. Now what we saw is that during the fixed heat production trial, um, the fit and the non-fit group both had nearly identical heat productions, which resulted in nearly identical changes in both esophageal temperatures as well as rectal temperatures. And since their evaporative requirement for heat balance was nearly identical, they had nearly identical whole body sweat losses. Now, when a, whoops, there we go. Now, when we administered a relative exercise intensity, the um, fit group had a significantly greater heat production, which resulted in both significantly greater changes in esophageal temperature, as well as significantly greater changes in rectal temperature. And since their evaporative requirement for heat balance was also greater, they had a significantly greater whole body sweat losses. So here we see that aerobic fitness does not, in fact, influence thermoregulatory responses. Now, when we evaluated the economical and non-economical groups, we saw once again that the fixed heat production trial resulted in nearly identical metabolic heat productions which in turn resulted in nearly identical changes in esophageal temperature, as well as nearly identical whole body sweat losses. What's interesting about this though, is that the economical group had to run significantly faster than the non-economical group to elicit the same changes in fixed heat, produ fixed heat production. So now when we administered the fixed running speed trial of 10.5 kilometers an hour, we saw that the non-economical group had significantly greater, a significantly greater heat production, which in turn resulted in both significantly greater changes in esophageal temperature, as well as significantly greater changes in rectal temperature. And since their evaporative requirement for heat balance was greater, they also had greater whole body sweat losses. So now if we think back to the GAN study um, and their assumption that a fixed heat, fixed running speed would elicit an absolute VO2, so a, fixed heat, so a fixed heat production, it is clear that that's not the case because our results and their results during the fixed running speed trial are relatively similar, whereas the fixed heat production trial resulted in identical changes in um, core temperature. Therefore, we can, therefore, the running economy does have physiologically significant influence on thermoregulatory responses. So in conclusion, um, VO2 max does not independently alter uh, changes in, court in thermoregulatory responses. Thermoregulatory responses are in fact influenced by body mass, heat production, and running economy as a function of heat production. So when comparing uh, independent groups, um, such as adults and children, a fixed heat production per unit mass should be used to do so. Thank you all for listening, and I'd like to thank the ASPITAR Organizing Committee for having me here today. We'll open up questions to the audience. Okay, I'll ask some if nobody has any. Nothing. Um, I noticed that the uh, criteria was for whether it was high efficiency, low efficiency, or fit or unfit was a core temperature measurement. And I think I saw Dr. J publish some papers saying that uh, thermography basically to calculate heat storage and stuff, there were, there were a number of faults with it. Um, with differences in body composition and just using a core temperature. Um, how precise is that to really get at your answer? Well, since we matched for body mass, um, there should be 
no issue in terms of that and also in terms of body composition the next presentation will answer that so i don't want to so you, so you think then that, that measuring a rectal temperature gives you a, a pretty good valid measure of heat storage be, for between group comparison? A change in core temperature, okay. yes. Right. It's the best we currently have. <laughs> and then um, the second one comes back to this idea of, uh, of fitness. And very good data and, and very understandable. But um, was there any difference between the groups uh, in terms of acclimatization state? When did, they, when did they train or were they training differently? Because you'd expect that if the people were more fit by training more, they'd turn on their sweating earlier and actually they, they would be a little bit lower core temperature. Right, so um, because we did changes in core temperature and not absolute core temperatures, that kind of eliminates that. So at the start, yes, the fitter group did have lower absolute core temperatures than the unfit group, however, we only measured changes. So the data that was presented was changes. So the changes would demonstrate the heat that they accumulated during the period of exercise. But if, if, they, were, if they were sweating earlier, wouldn't they then have a little less heat storage and a smaller change? Yeah. I, it, it doesn't it, matter. I don't you probably can't account be, for all that anyway. I don't think that would be, yeah. <laughs> we all could right. have accounted for that. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for the nice presentation.